Over the last 20 days, Tesla is up nearly 30% or even a little bit more yesterday. The question is now, what are we going to do? Is Tesla going to go up more or is it going to drop like a stone? That's the topic of this video. It's time for a trading update. So let's jump right in. Here you see the live chart of Tesla today on Thursday, September 25th. So what you see is since September 2nd, we are up from 329 to 426 and even hit 442 yesterday. That's a lot. So that's nearly 30%. The question is, if you're into Tesla, if you're a long-term investor, should you do anything here? Should you scale back or should you double down? Of course, this is not investment advice. I'm just sharing my perspective and what I'm doing here. First of all, we have to take a step back. We have a lot of discussions on X about this, but let's take a step back and first bucket investors into three buckets. All three are bullish on Tesla, but one bucket has under 100% of their portfolio in Tesla, right? That means you are just bullish on Tesla. Maybe you are 30% in Tesla and 70% in other stocks. If that's the case, everything we discussed today is irrelevant. Because my big picture perspective is Tesla is heavily undervalued strategically. The fair future value of Tesla end of 2025 will be roughly $850, which means you get a 50% discount. Tesla should be 100% higher than it is now end of the year. I'm not saying it will be, but it should be on a discounted cash flow level. So because I'm so bullish on Tesla, if you are invested less than 100%, don't worry what I'm saying here. If I was invested less than 100%, I would just stay in the market and say, who cares if this goes back down 20% or not? We have so much upside, stay in, no discussion. Now the second bucket, 100% Tesla invested. If you're 100%, you have the choice if you fall into bucket one or bucket three. So at 100%, you are very, very bullish on Tesla, all in, all of your portfolio in stocks is in Tesla, you can choose. Are you bucket one and just stick with it and don't do anything like Steve Mark Ryan, for example, all in, just Tesla, everything good. Or are you acting like the third bucket? And that is what this video is all about. It's all about the third bucket. The third bucket are people like me who are more than 100% in Tesla. Now, what does that mean? It means that you're using margin or call options and leaps to have a net exposure above 100%. Why do I have above 100%? Because I understand the stock, I think. I did very extensive, extensive analytics on the stock, and I believe you're undervalued dramatically, so it's worth doubling down a little bit. What's very important is I do not like a margin situation right now. The difference between net exposure over 100% on margin versus net exposure over 100% on call or leap options is, even though they do similar things on the upside, that if you're in leaps in call options, you do not run margin call risk. So what does that mean? It means if we hit some problem here in the market, if we see a NASDAQ S&P correction of 20% and Tesla dives down 40%, which it definitely would if that happens, and you're in Tesla leveraged over 100% on margin, you might get what's called a margin call. And if you get a margin call, you are screwed. Because even if you're right, even if I am right, and long term Tesla goes to 800, if Tesla goes to 200 in between, that's a little bit extreme, but let's say 300 in between, and you're on margin right now, you get squeezed out and you can't do much. You can do some things, but you don't want to be in that situation. And then when Tesla snaps back up and goes to 500, you're losing out because you lost the money on the way down, but then you were not in Tesla anymore because you got squeezed out of your margin position and then you can't participate in the upside. Whereas if you are in leaps, all of this doesn't matter because you're not buying leaps on margin. You can't, it's, it's technically not possible. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. So on leaps, yeah, you might get completely destroyed on paper in your portfolio, but you don't have to do anything. You just hold through it, gonna get, go back up and everything is fine. That is why I prefer leap call options over margin. They do similar things on the upside, but on the downside, you can't get squeezed out. So that's just a little disclosure before we continue. So everything I'm saying now is for the people who are over 100% exposed to Tesla, ideally through leaps and not through margin, what do we do in this situation? Now, 
here's the thing. I got a lot of slack, not a lot, but some people push back on X when I'm discussing these things because they don't understand what I just said. They think I'm a trader. I'm not a trader. I'm a long-term Tesla bull, as long as the fundamentals hold up the way they do. But if you are exposed to that level, you need or should trade around the margins. Because if Tesla goes down, let's say 20% from here or even 10%, and you anticipate that and scale back on the margin just a little bit. You go, let's say you have a 2x exposure. If Tesla goes up 10%, you're going up 20%. If Tesla goes down 10%, you're probably going down 22% or something. If you even scale back a little bit on the exposed side, 10%, would I just scaled back 10% of my options around for 20 something, uh, I think two weeks ago. And then it comes back down. And then you go back in with that 10%. That pays off dramatically over time, right? You are going to boost your annual returns by 20, 30% if you do this a few times. That's why it's worth it. And since you are so exposed, if you're so exposed, if you scale back and you're wrong, it's not really hurting you, to be frank, because you're still exposed 1.8x or something. That's all alpha over Tesla. So that is the context in that we discuss these little tactical marginal trading. Uh, situation. So the question for us is then, what is the situation here? And I did a quick analysis. Of course, we want to know now, is it time to sell you 10% or your 20% to scale out of your options? Or should you wait a little bit longer? And does this thing go to 440 again or 480 to all time highs before it drops? Of course, that's the mother of all questions. And I want to look into that. I did a little post here on X where I elaborated on some quantitative analytics I ran. So I looked into Tesla long-term data. Uh, and this is a quick plot that tells us how statistically Tesla behaved as a stock based on 20-day follow-through versus prior surge. And we have a prior surge situation. So here you see how much did Tesla go up. This is historic data, quick analysis. Each data point here has multiple incidences behind it. Not many, but multiple. So we have to be a little cautious. There's some stochastic effects here, but we are here 30% up, right? Could go towards 40% prior burst threshold. The yellow line tells you 10 days prior and the blue line 20 days prior. So at this point we are 20 days prior, right? The blue line is relevant. The yellow line is already outdated because at 30% burst was in the previous 20 days, not 10 days, right? And then you see here what the follow through looks like. So what do the next 20 days statistically look like? Do you make money or do you lose money? So let me explain. If you have the blue line and the prior days were 20% up, statistically, in average, you make 3% additional gains over the next 20 days. And the funny thing is, if you have a 30% run up, it actually goes up. You're likely to make even more. No, we have to take this with a grain of salt. This is just statistics, what happened in the past, right? But it gives you a little bit of feeling. So based on that curve, based on this curve, right, we can easily go here into the 40% surge segment at 320. You can do the math, right? That's 120 up. You see, we are not far away from 40. So this is very, very interesting, right? So we started at 320, 27, 20 days ago. We are now at 426. A 40% previous burst in the previous 20 days would be 440. We just hit 440. And on 440 towards 50, you see this giant drop. If you are 50%, which would be 150, so that's like 460 roughly, right? 460, you are really going into a negative territory, you know? Now, why is this interesting? I don't want to overinterpret this. But why is it interesting? It tells you a little bit what's going on here. In this 420 to 480 range, 480 is the previous all-time high, we are really getting into a territory where it's very unlikely based on the statistics that you will make more money holding this through. Okay? Very important. And I believe I take this just as one data point. This is a quantitative statistical analysis of what happened in the past with Tesla specifically. Now, for all of you who say, oh, it's totally different. Tesla was completely different before. No, it was not. The robotaxi situation and the repricing of the Tesla stock that we will see very soon or that we already witnessed to some extent is very similar to previous repricings. Tesla behaves like this. When the Model 3 came out, no one believed it. Everyone thought Tesla is bank bankrupt in 2019, except for me. 
and some others. So we totally went in when everyone went out. And then the market repriced it and this thing goes up 500, 600%. So this is all in these, right? This is all part of the statistic. So no, Tesla is not different from Tesla before. It's the same story to some extent. Disruptive innovation, people don't get it. Tesla proves it, goes up. So it's all in there. And the way I see it, this is just one dimension of analysis. Another dimension is all-time highs. Why 80 is all-time highs that we hit last year on December 17th, 2024. And then we went downhill. So there is, you know, from a technical and psychological perspective, the all-time high is another resistance. Now, the interesting thing is that they coincide. Because if you go up 50%, this is all-time highs. This is exactly 460, 470, 480. You're going down here at 480, right? If you go to 480 now. So I would be very cautious. In other words, if we don't see dramatic catalysts happening now, I think we are looking into a downturn, but we are looking into a downturn at 450, 460, 470. We had 426, so we are still here. That's how I view the stock right now. We are in an interesting situation um, on a pure stock analytics side. Well, we had 428. Cold-blooded statistics tell us, well, you better stay in. But you watch out because we can get into that critical ter territory within one trading day very easily into 450, 460. That can happen in one day. And then we are definitely on thin ice. Now, big picture. Everything I'm saying is probabilistic, right? There can be a catalyst. They can, they can be, remove the safety driver in Austin and they can launch the affordable model, which they probably will in two weeks. I will get into this in a second. So they might launch the affordable model and then this goes out of the window short term and then you don't know what's happening. But my take is, you know, for all you Uber bulls out there who think Tesla always goes up, obviously you're wrong on this. I would be very cautious. I think once we are now exactly on thin ice, if we go up to 440, 450, 460, we go on very thin ice and the odds this goes down is very high. Now, will it go down a lot? I don't think so. I think there will be a retracement at some point, maybe back to 400 or something. And we, depending what the market does, we linger around there. And then, boom, you know, we can go up all the way to 800 end of the year. I don't think we will. I think we go to 500 to 600, not to 800. But theoretically, we could go to 800 if anything dramatic happens, if there's some catalyst earlier than I thought, right? Sorry for the sun. We have a little sun here. So that is my tactical take. This is only true. What I'm saying is only true right now. So this is a very real time video. You have to watch this. You know, you have to see what I'm saying on Monday and so on, because it depends on what this does. So that's a pure Tesla perspective. Now, there's also something called the market, right? The market, Mr. Market. What does Mr. Market do? Well, Mr. Market, as you know, I also distrust. Look at this NASDAQ. Look at six months. So we are going all time highs here. Uh, here's max. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to scare anyone, but this is the max NASDAQ. So we are definitely at all time highs. If you look at S&P, same thing. Look at this all time highs from 2000 here all the way here. So you see, mm, this is not uh, it's pretty high, but of course, don't over interpret this. It doesn't mean there's a crash or anything. It just means, well, we're definitely not at the bottom of any type. Six months, you also see this going up. You know that I'm concerned about a seasonal correction. My concern is still active. I said beginning of September, I see a 50% chance of a seasonal correction. Nothing dramatic, but 10% or something that drops Tesla 20%, which is 80 bucks. If that happens. I think this still can absolutely happen. I reduced the odds a little bit after the last Fed meeting and nothing bad happened, but there's another Fed meeting coming out of October. So I remain high alert. This can happen in no time because October and September are very tricky months and the market is always nervous, especially if it's so high. If we go to the VIX, let's go to the VIX. Let's see if we can find this right away. Look at the VIX. The VIX also behaves a little suspicious in my opinion. Peak today, by the way, a lot. Uh, here, beginning of September, you saw this. It went from 14 all the way to 19. So that was a pretty dramatic leap. This is how quickly things can happen. Right. And now we are creeping up again. Market is a little shaky. So it could be a wall of worry. We could might climb this up and up. And the more we see these little, you know, 
problematic days like today where it drops and then creeps up again and drops again. I see, I prefer that versus just constantly green, green, green in October. That's dubious. So we have to watch the market too, very closely. So what is my message here? We wrap it up now. I will have another video out on a more fundamental level to look at the current long-term price model of Tesla. Where are we at? What is the actual future, fair future value of Tesla right now? In this video, we are talking tactics. I would say here's the takeaway. Tesla is getting a little bit on thin ice. Statistically, we are actually still in a good territory right now very tactically good territory which means that can change in a day but here at 428 the statistics tell us it's more likely to go up more once we hit 440 450 460 it's getting very thin and dangerous i think 480 it would be super dangerous unless it's sitting on the new catalyst it might drop in the next two weeks with the affordable model but then we reassess as long as this is not happening it's not the case so tesla is still positive and green i still don't scale back more right now as we speak if we go to 440 450 i will scale back more and i do not think tesla can just go up much more from here i do not think tesla can go through all-time highs from here without an additional catalyst short term so that is my take especially with the recent action where we see tesla actually hitting a wall right hitting the wall exactly at 444 and then again at 442. So you see there is already resistance forming here after this great run. So I would be very cautious. I would be very cautious, not super cautious, but this is coming plus the market. Don't trust the market right now. So everything's still kind of in the light green, but it can cross the line into the red any day. That is what I'm thinking. So I hope that was helpful. Watch out for the next video where we go a little more fundamental and look at Tesla. I will have these trading videos a little more frequent now at least once weekly maybe twice a week depending what happens in the market i think now is the time to really watch out very closely and as i said in the beginning if you are just under 100 tesla don't even watch these videos right you don't need to do anything just stay in and be happy okay i hope that was helpful see you very soon